Recurrence relations are one of the first things that you learn in Unit 4, Topic 1, Loans, Investments and Annuities. And you really need to have a good understanding of this before moving forward. So on your formula sheet, there are three recurrence relations. Notice there's a pattern going on here. Notice that on the left-hand side, for all of these equations, there's A, subscript, N plus 1. The word subscript just means a smaller text next to the letter. So that's the same for each of those formulas. That's constant. Now, a lot of people from my experience get confused with the whole A N plus one and A N and not really understanding what it means, like what's actually going on. So just remember this, N just refers to the term number. What I mean by that is if we look at this sequence here, right, really basic sequence, we've got A O, A one, A two, and A three. So the first term is always the start or the original, hence why it's called A O. Then we've got A1 being the first term. It's kind of the second term in a sense, but let's just think of it as the, the first term, not the original term, but the first term after that. Then we've got the second term, then we've got the third term. Now with this sequence in particular, notice there's a pattern going on, right? It's easy to see we're adding five each time, or we could say we're adding five to each term. Because of that, I could write this formula here. I could say that A1 is gonna be equal to A O plus five. I would be correct to say that. I also could go on to say that A2 is gonna be equal to A1 plus five. I could also say, it's not really mathematical, but I could say that the next term is gonna be equal to the previous term plus five. So where I'm going with this is that A subscript N plus one, just think of that as being the next term. And in order to find the next term, we need to know the previous term, the previous term being a n. And something you always have to do with a recurrence relation, which I didn't talk about just yet, you always have to write a o at the end. So you've generally got a comma, and then after that comma, you write down what the original term is. A recurrence relation is just a way to represent a sequence of numbers using a formula. That's essentially what it is in layman's terms. The next example here, we've got a new sequence now. I've noticed that we're timesing by three each time. So I could say that A1 would be equal to three times by AO. Then in math, normally we don't write three times AO. We would just write three AO because we don't need to write a times if there's a letter and a number next to each other. Following the same pattern, I could then say A2 is equal to three times A1. And I could say that A3 is equal to three times A2. So hopefully you're starting to see the pattern, but notice the number on the left is is always one more than the number on the right, always. Remember, we've always got to do AO at the end. And in this case, AO is one. So there we have it, we've created our recurrence relation. Another sequence, we've got two, seven, 22, 67. This one's a little bit trickier because what we're doing is we're timesing by three and then we're adding one. Although it's a bit trickier, we can still just write a recurrence relation. So see how we're just writing a rule to represent what's going on in the sequence. And as usual, we've always got to write AO on the end, which in this case is two. So there we have it. We've created a recurrence relation again. Notice that you can have a combo of operations. So it doesn't just have to be adding or timesing. It can be a combination of operations. So notice how with this recurrence relation, there's a three in front of AN and there's a one at the end. Notice that looks kind of similar in a way to these two formulas here, right? We could think of the R part as being three, and then the last constant on the end, we could think about that as being a one. So it kind of more looks like the third formula because there's a plus sign instead of a minus sign. So in the next video, I'm gonna start to get into some financial type stuff and how we might use this in the real world, but primarily how we're gonna use this in general maths. So the next video will link the whole recurrence relation idea to recurrence relation relations in general math. You'll understand eventually why it was really, really important to do this first video because it just leads on to everything.